right, so in this video, we are going to practice adding account numbers to the chart of accounts. I have the exercise pulled up here on the right hand side. This is part of the basic level pro advisor certification course. If you would like more information about that course, there is a link below in the description. Be sure to click on that. But let's dive right in and see what we're going to do today. Now, Craig's new accountant has asked you to set up account numbers for a few of his major balance sheet accounts as follows. The checking account, savings account, and accounts receivable, and their associated account numbers. How would you set this up for him? Let's take a look. First of all, we need to be in the sample company. Now, if you're not sure how to get into the sample company or get your own free QBOA account, be sure to click on the link below in the description. I have the sample company pulled up over here. This is the dashboard. Now, an important note here that the sample company is very finicky when trying to add account numbers. Make sure you start in a fresh copy of the sample company before starting this exercise, meaning that if you've been working in the sample company on other things, be sure to log out completely before log and then logging back in before doing this exercise um, so that you are in a brand new session of the sample company. So let's get started with the exercise. Let's get started setting up the account numbers in the chart of accounts. First thing we need to do is turn on the option in our settings. So to get there, we need to click on the gear icon and then click account and settings. That is up here on the right hand side of the sample company. Click on that gear icon. Under your company, select account and settings. When this pulls up, we need to click on advanced, which is right here on the left hand side. And then in the chart of accounts section, we need to click on the pencil icon. That is this section right here. You can click anywhere in the section or click the pencil icon specifically. Now we need to click the toggle on across from enable account numbers. That is this one right here. Once you click it, it will turn green, meaning that it is turned on. And then when you select show account numbers, it will show the numbers in our chart of accounts. That is this right here. We want to click on that checkbox to make sure that it is turned on so that when we get to the chart of accounts, we will be able to show the account numbers. Go ahead and click on save now that we have completed that and then we want to click done. It is now turned on so let's go see what this looks like in the chart of accounts. Now before we go there, there are other ways to get into the chart of accounts, um, but if we use them immediately after turning on the account numbers, meaning the account numbers field, sometimes the account numbers field won't show up. Um, so as a hint here, if the account number field is not immediately showing up on the chart of accounts page, we can click on dashboards from the left navigation bar and then go back to the chart of accounts page. So let's get to that page by clicking on the gear icon and then clicking on chart of accounts. Again, that gear icon right here. Under your company, let's click on chart of accounts. And it looks like the number field, which should be over here on the left hand side, is not showing up at the moment. So let's follow the hint that was in the exercise. Let's click on dashboards to get to um, get off that page. And then let's go back to the chart of accounts page now. Um, there are, as I mentioned, several ways to get into that page. Let's do it a different way. This time we're going to hover over transactions and then select chart of accounts. And when we do, now we see that number field. This is where those account numbers will show up. So um, as I mentioned here, as I just said, you can see that there is a number field where you will assign the account numbers right there. Now there are two ways to assign the numbers to the accounts. Let's start with how to edit the accounts individually. In the action column of the checking account row, we're going to click on the down arrow and then click edit. Now here is that checking row right here. I need to scroll over just a tiny bit to see that arrow. Click on that down arrow and then select edit. Now in the number account field, we want to type 10 200. That is what was part of the scenario that we saw earlier. The account number field is right here. Click into it and then type 10 200 so that we have that account number added. 
Now we need to just click on save. That is right here. And now that has been saved, you can see it right here. And you can also see that it is here part of the name. So because you selected show account numbers, that checkbox that we checked in the account and settings, the number will also appear as part of the account name as we see right here. If you turn this setting off, the only time you will see the account number is when you edit that account. So by clicking on that checkbox, we see it right here. Now we need to add it, the account numbers for the two other accounts. Um, so let's batch edit the other two um, to make it a little bit quicker. We want to click on the pencil icon just above the accounts grid. So let's do that. That is right here. And actually, as you hover over it, you can see that it says batch edit. So we know this is the one we want. Click on that pencil icon so that you can edit um, more of the accounts at one time. We want to type 10300 and then 11,000 in the number boxes for savings and accounts receivable or AR respectively. So the savings account, uh, that one for click into the number box and type 10300. And then in the accounts receivable, which is right below that, in the number field, we're going to type in 11,000. And then we simply just need to click on save. That is the green button right here. Click on that save. And there you go. You see now that we have added the account numbers to those uh, three accounts as we saw in the scenario. Now, if you liked this exercise and you want to do more like this, or if you would like more information about the basic level Pro Advisor certification course, be sure to click on the link below in the description. And that is it today. We will see you.